Now there are other ways to use InMap, and one of the more popular ways uh, that doesn't require you installing anything extra on your system, in most cases, doesn't require anything other than putting a CD or a DVD into the drive of the system and rebooting it, is something called a live CD or a live DVD distribution. And there are a number of popular distributions out there. If you haven't run any of these before, um, just for InMap is useful, but they're amazing sets of tools. This is great because you can grab any machine on the network and you can load the CD up into it and suddenly you have an amazing number of security tools available to you. And it helps you can repartition machines, uh, you can go out and run scans on your network, you can run uh, penetration tests, you can run in-map scans, very, very useful if you're trying to find out what's happening on a particular network. And in almost every case with these live CD distributions, you're not touching the hard drive of that system. So you can run these, perform your tests, remove the CD, reboot it, and it's back to the way it was. Now one that I'm going to use tonight, I want to walk you through this right now, is this Linux Network Security Toolkit. And, and there's a couple of reasons I like this one. I can run it as a CD. It, first, it's got a lot of really nice capabilities in it to run from a web front end. But it also includes on the website a VMware machine download. Now, for those of you that haven't used VMware, uh, it is a, a product that uh, is, used to be VMware as a company. They're now owned by EMC. It is a way to run virtual machines in your existing operating system. And VMware is very useful for doing this, and I'll show you exactly how it works right now. I'm just going to uh, exit out of here. There you go. There's my lovely desktop. Tried to get rid of the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different things that I have usually running. Here's my Linux Network Security Toolkit. So when you download Linux Network Security Toolkit, this is what you get. All these VMDK files and a bunch of other things. Now for those of you familiar with VMware, you used to have to purchase VMware to run any of these. Well, over the last couple of years, one of the things they did was make it so that there was a player so that you can run the VMs on your desktop. It's interesting that these virtual machines, they're just files. There's nothing extra or unique about them. I can take these files and put them onto a Linux machine running VMware, and this virtual machine runs just fine on that Linux device. Here I have some configuration settings for Windows that comes with this, and I'm going to right mouse click, and I'm going to open it with my VMware player. I'm going to do that instead of double clicking because I also have the fully blown VMware virtual machine console, but I don't want to do that. I want to run the player so you get a feel for exactly what this looks like when you're running it. And hopefully all of this will run with my webinar front end and we'll see what happens when this thing starts loading up on my system and caching some of this hard drive information out that I have running here. So here's my VMware player and uh, begin starting. Now notice this looks just like starting up a PC, and that's really what's happening behind the scenes. This is NST 1.5.0, this is the latest version, and we're booting Linux. Whoa, wait, I'm running Windows and I'm booting Linux. If you haven't done this before, uh, you, a, whole, a whole world of different things will be open to you. One of the nice things that VM, uh, EMC and VMware have done is there are a number of different virtual machines out on their website that you can just download. There are appliances that can just run as firewalls right out of the gate. There are security ones like this. There's other appliances, they call them, that they've created, that other people have created, and hundreds of them are out there. And if it's just already created for you. You don't have to install Linux. You don't have to do anything special. It just runs. And as you can see, it starts up and does everything automatically in my player. And here I am at my Network Security Toolkit login. This is what we're going to run tonight to do some of these scans. And uh, I hope it goes well. Let's see and see how this runs. I'm taxing all of the things that are on my computer here. So we'll go full screen with this, see how this works for you. I'm going to log in. Now, one of the things that comes with this is, is the login command. So you can see exactly how to log in as root. And the default password is uh, network NST, network security toolkit 2003. And hopefully I typed that right. I have a microphone in my face and doing a lot of things at one time here. So, hey, I got it right. One for me. So my last Firefox session closed unexpectedly. So yeah, let's start a, a new session. That's because I was running this testing it prior to our webinar tonight. I just shut it down so it would be all done. And when we first connect in NST, it asks you for your username and password. And I just use the default. You probably, you may want to do that on yours. You may not. 
and this is the default screen that comes up. We're done. Ta-da. We are running in ST on this machine. So one of the nice things is that all of these different settings that are in here uh, is all web-based, a web-based front end. That's another way that you can run some of the tools that are available. Look at all of these things in NST that you can do. This is what I mean by just a simple download. You load up a VMware and you're off to the races performing an amazing number of functions on an individual system. There's more here than I would even understand or want to go through in one sitting. One we're interested in is InMap. There it is. We're going to click on it. It takes me to a very nice web front end for InMap. I can go down and start a new InMap scan like right here, and I can put exactly what I want on the command line right here. Let's do a dash SS. I'll leave the local host. We'll do dash VV. Um, maybe I'll also do a UDP scan, and I'll tell it to start it up. This is very different. If you've run InMap at the command line, you realize that's that's pretty different than, than what we've done before. If we exit back out, there, in fact, is my command right there, and it's done. It completed successfully. The scan results show us. Let's see what happened out here on this machine. There's our in-map results. Then let's go through this, this, these results really quick. This is a very common output that you'd get from in-map, and there's some interesting things that are here. Uh, let's go through from the beginning. This is what we'll see. This is in-map 4.20. By the way, that's the latest that's out on insecure.org. So that's another nice thing about this particular uh, compilation of programs. It's already built, and it's using some of the latest software that's out there. It's very recent. Uh, okay, well, we initiated a SIN scan, and if you've ever run a scan before, notice there's a lot of extra things here. That's because one of the things I did on the command line was do a dash VV. If you haven't taken advantage of InMap's verbosity options before, very, very useful to you because what you're going to find is that there's going to be a lot more information available for you once you go through the scan. And if you're doing it interactively, you'll also find a number of things will pop up on the screen as it goes along, which is often helpful if you're trying to figure out what's really going on behind the scenes. So as it discovered the open ports with the double V, which is two levels of verbosity, uh, you can see that it found open ports as it went and completed a SIN scan after it finished the SIN scan, it started a UDP scan. So individual scans are done one after the other, especially if I do multiple scans at the command line. And it said it scanned in that local device and uh, finished the, the, uh, um, the host is up, it finished, there are some interesting ports in the device, and it showed port 22, which is SSH, port 80, which is HTTP, 443, a web server running on this particular uh, live CD or a vir live virtual machine, if you will. An X Windows server is running on port 6000, very common, this environment. Notice it just lumped in also the UDP, and remember, with the UDP, if we find an open port, very often we're not quite sure if it's open or if it's filtered. And sure enough, our in-map output shows us open or filtered. And that's for a DHCP uh, configuration that's there, a server that's running on that machine. It's kind of nice to have that front end. Uh, very often, though, what you really want to do is something that goes all the way down to the command line. And what I'm going to do is minimize the browser. And you can see if we right mouse click in the background, I've got a lot of these options available to me already. So for security applications, network applications, a lot of different things, they're all here available. Even the in-map graphical front end has been installed for me. Well, let's try a couple of different things. We're going to see if this works. I'm going to load up Wireshark. If you haven't used Wireshark before, this is a protocol analyzer. And we're going to go use this protocol analyzer because it becomes very useful when we start going through and looking to see what's happening when we run, we run an in-map scan. I'm also going to open up a terminal display because I'm going to run InMap at the command line. I'm going to assume that in your particular case that you may not have InMap available with a, a fancy schmancy front end. So we're going to go hardcore here. We're going to use InMap at the command line and run a few things. And we're, we're going to come back to this in just a bit and run a few scans. But that is a very easy way to take advantage of a virtual machine. And we didn't actually install anything other than our VMware player and load some files out on this machine. And we were up and running with InMap. So very often, the operating system you have in your desktop doesn't really matter. So go out and get a CD and reboot a machine or load it up on a USB stick. A number of those CDs will allow you to do that these days or load up your virtual machine. If you are in a case where you really do want to install InMap yourself, there are some fantastic installation guides that Fyodor has out on insecure.org. And I added the URL there.